So here's the situation. You're working on your project, you're trying out that patch replacement tool we talked about last week in Quick Tip Tuesday, and you try it out and you're like, Jay, come on, man, this ain't working. My frame's moving here. I don't have a static shot like you. What do I do? I gotta track this thing. So that's what we're talking about today. How do you use the tracker in combination with the patch replacement tool and it's pretty easy we're going to jump into the color tab for this so you know different tab here but it's still pretty easy and i think you guys are going to be able to do this so i've got several examples we're going to take a look at here now you can jump into fusion if you want to get even more advanced but for today we're just jumping to color tab but first before we jump into resolve if you're new here my name is jay or jason either one yedlovsky and we talk a lot about davinci resolve here how to do things tips tricks all kinds of stuff here in davinci resolve and my goal is really just to help you guys understand the program better make it a little bit simpler because let's be honest this program gets pretty hard pretty quick do talk a little bit about some gear stuff because without the gear we can't do this thing called youtube here right you need your microphones your cameras your lights your, all that stuff so i like talking about that sharing that stuff with you guys as well as a few videos here and there about my journey here on youtube because i know a lot of you guys are on that journey too so if you're in any of that consider subscribing to my channel with that out of the way, let's jump into Resolve, show you how to track some objects here and use that patch replacement tool. All right, so jumping into Resolve here, I've got a couple different clips here. I'm gonna show you how this works. Right now I'm in the Edit tab, right here down at the bottom, you can see we're in the Edit tab. What we wanna do is jump over into the Color tab. So just select your clip or put your playhead right by the clip there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and jump over into the Color tab. Now in the Color tab here, we got a lot going on. Now just to make sure we're all looking at the same thing to start with here, I'm gonna come up to Workspace, and my reset UI layout. Well, and that just blew it up on the screen there. So we're gonna resize that back down. All right, there we go. So we should all be looking at the same thing now. Reset the UI layout there if you uh, have some different kind of setup going on. So select the clip that you wanna work with. Here's the clip that I got. Now, if I play through it, you can see it's a drone. It kind of flies back. And we got this guy walking out here. Now, I wanna make this look like it's just these two people standing there. I don't want this guy walking in the background. So we wanna take him out. How do I do that? So let's go back to the beginning of the clip here. And we can see the guy's right in the beginning of the clip. If I zoom out, so he's right here. That's what we want to take out. So first thing we need to do, come on over into your node area and want to go ahead and add in a new node. There's a few ways you can do it. You can right click, say add node and add a corrector node right here. Or what I like to do is just use option S or if you're on PC, you can use alt S. So boom, it'll add in another serial node for you. Next thing we need to do is go and find the patch replacement tool. Now, remember, this is only available in the studio version. Actually, it's probably in the free version, but, and I'll have to double check this, but you'll just get a watermark or something like that because I think everything is in both versions. It's just, you might get watermarks that tell you you need to upgrade. So keep that in mind. It's only in studio. If you don't have studio, you're going to get a watermark or something like that probably. So come on over to the effects library, open that up right here, and you want to scroll down here to patch replacer. So it's towards the bottom here under FX Revival. Just go ahead and grab that and drop it onto the node that we just created. So now you can see it dropped on the effect right here, right? We've got a clone and a source uh, window here. If you don't see these, you wanna come here and click on this little guy right here. And that's gonna open up these options and you can click on Open FX Overlay and that's gonna allow you to see it. So you can see if I come to off, I don't see it. I'm like, oh, where is it, right? So I'll go turn on open effects overlay, and then you're going to see it. Now, if I play through the video, you can see this stays static in one place. We want to track this dude right here. So let's go back to the beginning. The next thing that we need to do is we can do it right in this node here. You want to come down to your tracker. Now, your tracker down along the bottom here is this guy right here, tracker. And you've got different options in your tracker. Typically, it's probably defaulted to this, which is the window tracker using a power window. In this case, we want to use the FX tracker so we can track the effect. Once you've got that clicked on, you can change any of these if you need to. I'm just going to leave them how it is for now. But I want to come down here and this little plus down here at the bottom with the arrow, go ahead and click on that. Now, once you click on that, look on the screen. We now have this red X. So what we want to do is take that red X and place it over top of whatever we want to track. Now, I'm going to track this guy because there's good contrast between this guy and the white snow, right? Between that red jacket and the white snow. But you want to find something that's got some good contrast. So if the object you want to track, you know, doesn't have good contrast or maybe isn't tracking properly, but your whole scene is moving in the same way, you can track it using something different. You don't have to use that actual uh, point. In this case, the the guy here in the background, you don't have to use that. I can track something else in the shot that moves in the same way that the thing I want to remove moves. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so got that set there. I want to track that guy. 
Now I'm going to come down and just hit actually this button right here. I like this track forward and backwards. So if you're somewhere in the middle of your clip, it's going to track all the way forwards and then it's going to track all the way backwards. You get everything. So let's go ahead and click that. Resolve is going to go through and do its thing. And notice that X is staying right on that dude. All right. And just like that, we should be tracked and good to go. So I'm going to come back here to this little icon here. I'm going to click the drop down and bring back up my open effects overlay. So now I want to move this to cover the guy. So this one is our source and this one is what's getting replaced. So I'm going to drag this up here. I'm going to shrink this guy down and I want to try and just cover, cover the guy up here, right? Now, when I'm trying to replace or patch something, what I like to do is get something that's, you know, relatively close to what we're trying to replace or fix. Um, you know, I don't want to come all the way down here in the shot and pick something to patch up to this area up here because you're probably going to see the texture more down here. Um, it might look a little different and, you know, in this image, it's probably not as big a deal or in this clip, but in other clips, it may be a bigger deal. You know, something that's closer to the camera is going to have a different size texture or different look to it than something that's farther away. You know, you got depth of field happening there and things. So I like to try and choose something that's close to what I want to replace. So right there looks good to me. So now if I come back out and we just hit play, I'm going to make this guy a little bigger here. Can I make this guy a little bigger here? Let's close the gallery. There we go. Make this guy a little bigger. Let's hit play and see how that looks. So it's pretty good. We can see it's tracking the guy. It looks like it's doing a pretty good job. Now I'm going to turn off my effects overlay by clicking on this guy here and I'm going to hit off. So now we can see, I don't see the guy there. It's good. Looks perfect, right? Playing. You could tell and you would never know that there was a guy there. So that's great. So that works out perfectly. And it's just as easy as that. You just set your tracking point, have resolve track it, and then you can move your patch replacement tool to that area and it's going to move along with whatever point you are tracking. So you're saying, okay, that's cool. That's good. But you know, it's pretty easy. That's just all white snow. What if I have something a little different? Well, another situation of something where you might want to remove something is in maybe something like this, right? Let's say that, uh, you know, we have this video of this person here. She's moving around a little bit and just for an example's sake, I'm going to say we want to remove this little whatever that is right there. I'm going to call it a little blemish. We want to remove that. Well, we can use the same technique here to try and remove that. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a new node. Click on the first node here. I'm going to use Option or Alt if you're on PC, plus S. Going to add in a new node. You can rename these if you want so you know what's in what nodes. But for now, we're just keeping it basic and simple. I'm going to drag my patch replacer right onto the image. I'm going to move it out of the way a little bit. Now I want to go ahead and track this image. Now you notice my playhead's already kind of in the middle of the image. That's all right. In our tracker here, we're going to make sure we have our effects tracker turned on right here with this selected. We want to come down here, select our add tracking point, And now you see it pops the blue arrows on the screen. I'm going to move that right on top of this little blemish that I want to remove. And there is some contrast there, so I think it's going to track okay. So I'm going to put it right on there. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to use the track forward and track backward key right here. So that way, hopefully it does it all at once. Let's give it a whirl. All right, I don't know what happened there. Got a little glitch, so I hit the track backwards and that worked fine. Hey, sometimes these things happen. What are you going to do, right? Anyway, looks like we've got a good track here. So now, again, I'm going to take my uh, source window. I'm going to just move that out of the way for now. The area I want to replace, I'm going to size this guy down. And I'm going to bring it in and put it on top here. Now, obviously, we don't want to, you know, replace the this over here. Not what I want to do. So I'm going to size this down about as small as I can. And here's one tip on something that you can do so you can see underneath this thing, right? Because we've got full, you know, the full effect going on here. I can't see what's going on under it. How do I know I'm placing it right? Well, come on over to the effects library right here. And under settings for this effect, so you want to have your node selected in, in the settings here, you can come down to global blend right here. Open that up and we could just drop that back while we're moving the effect window around so I can see a little bit better, right? So I'm going to just shrink that down a little bit like that. Looks pretty good. Now, this is one instance where I think it's going to be helpful to clone or blend, clone blend, and this case is what we're using for the fill-in method, but do it somewhere close to this point because we want to match the texture and the, the shading of the skin, but we don't want to be too far away because if I came up here, draw, bring our blend back up, it might be too bright. It might not look good. So if I turn this off, uh, not too bad, but you can see it's a different texture there, right? So we don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my open effects back on. So what I like to do is I like to get it as close as I can. So, you know, maybe I want to just do somewhere like here, 
or just below it, but I kind of want to follow this line down. You can see where the makeup or whatever, cheekbone, I don't know, where, where that is, where it's changing. And this point is kind of right on there. So you might want to go a little above, a little below. I'm going to try it right there, kind of see how that works out. And you do have other options of how you can change the blend mode for these things. I'm not going to go into that right now. If you're interested, comment down below and we can go over all the tools here, you know, in our in our settings panel, if you're interested in that. But for now, I'm just kind of giving you basics. But you want to change the fill-in method here, you know, from clone to blend clone or any of these other ones, you can give those a try too. So let's see how this looks. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Let's play through that. I mean, that's it's pretty good. It looks not too shabby. I saw a little, little glitch in there. I don't know if that's just my computer or I can see where this little blip is right here. My tracking must have got thrown off or something for some reason. But you get the idea, especially if I back out, we're looking at it. Not too bad. I mean, you, would, you wouldn't even know. You would never know that there was that little blemish there. So that's another way that this effect works pretty good. All right, so I got two more examples here. I'm going to go through these real quick now that you got the idea of what we're doing here. So we have a cool shot here with an iceberg going on. I kind of like this. I just thought it was cool. So I want to take this little iceberg or chunk of ice out. So we're just going to go through this real quick, add in a new node, throw on the patch replacer, come down into our tracker, make sure we've got our effects tracker on, boom, click our little point in here, it drops it right in the middle of the frame. So I'm going to grab that, bring it down, you can always zoom in and zoom around real quick. You can zoom in and zoom out right here, right here real quick with uh, the middle mouse wheel. And if you push and hold, you can move around like that, pan around. So super helpful to know. So I'm going to come down here, boom, we're going to drop it right there. I'll make sure I'm at the beginning of my clip this time. I'm going to track forward. We're going to let Resolve do its thing. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to come in and grab my tool. Here's the part I want to replace. I'm going to bring this guy down. I'm going to come over here and drop my blend mode down so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to bring it right on up over here. It's pretty small. I'm going to try and get that in kind of tight there. You can always blur the edges a little bit if I want to. And I'm going to pick a point that's relatively close. There we go. That looks good. I'm going to zoom out, bring my blend back up. Let's turn off our open effects, play through, boom, it's good, it's gone. You would not even know it's there. Nobody would know. And a lot of times these things are going to go by so quick, nobody would know anyway. And the last one that's kind of cool is uh, this one right here that I've got of a dump truck. So let's say I'm using this for something and let's say I want to put a bunch of text over on this side of the screen right over here. So I need to remove this dump truck because it's in my way. I'm going to get that thing out of there. So again, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to come on over to my nodes, add in a new node, drop the patch replacer on there. I'm just going to move that out of the way for now. I'm going to come down to my tracker. Make sure I got the effects tracker. Click the little plus. It drops the blue plus on the screen for us here. And let's pick a point with some good contrast here. Oh, I don't know. Let's try right here in the corner of the bed. See how that works out. Go ahead and track forward or backward or forward and backward, depending on where your playhead is in the clip. I'm going to go forward. All right. I'm just going to back up to the beginning of the clip here. Now, let's see. We kind of want to, again, match our textures a little bit. You can see we've got darker colored dirt here and then you know a lighter path where they're driving through a little bit more frequently so let's bring this guy up here and drop my blend down a little so i can see where i'm putting it i'm gonna size that the best we can and then i'm gonna think about where do i want to put this patch replacement tool right so i could try maybe just right up here a little bit so i'll bring my blend back up see if we can match in now you can see as i move it around you know there's going to be spots where it just doesn't make sense it doesn't fit in good so you got to try and eyeball it up and find a spot that, you know, that makes some good sense for your particular clip and just make sure that you're trying to blend it together pretty good, you know? So maybe I want to come over here. I don't know, something like that. Let's turn it off and see how it looks. It's not too bad, you know. I mean, it's probably good enough. I'm just going to have some text here. And you know what? I think nobody would know the difference there. I think that's going to work out just fine for this particular clip. So that wraps it up. That is tracking using the tracking tool in the color tab for the patch replacer. Guys, it's easy. You got this, you can do this, no problem. Now, if you need more advanced tools to replace things and get rid of objects, there's lots of ways to do things in Resolve. So if you've got a different way, definitely comment down below. It might help somebody else out. If you learned a little bit of something, just a little something, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Thanks guys, see ya, peace. Hey, did you guys know that I just put out a new uh, set of project setting presets? Do I use them all the time? So I just boop, pop, load up Resolve, load one of these guys up. Good to go. If you're interested, link in the description below. You can check that out. Surprisingly, I don't think I got too many outtakes from this one. Thankfully, Quick Tip Tuesdays are pretty quick and easy, right? Not too many outtakes. I don't screw up too much. I mean, how hard is it to screw up a video that's, you know, a few minutes when you're done, right? <laughs> it's actually just pretty easy to screw it up. It happens often. Probably more often than I'd like to admit, you know what I mean? <laughs>
Oh, you ever feel like I just got so many videos to make? So many videos to make and so little time. So little time. Who saw my story from today? I'm filming this on uh, Thursday. Thursday the 13th. Who saw my story from today on uh, the YouTube? I was at Inspection New Jersey. Some guy pulled out a lane, waffled a, a pole in a cone. What? Crazy, crazy, crazy. Anyway. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Peace. funny i just got up like i'm gonna go somewhere <laughs> the door's actually even on that side <laughs> crack myself up oh man if you're a youtuber you gotta enjoy some time by yourself and be able to have fun alone and make yourself laugh all right pretty much most time by myself anyway so <laughs> all right where'd my mouse at all right let's stop this recording peace